Okay, let's take a look at how FWA works, especially as it concerns with real-time communications. Now I'm talking WebEx, Microsoft Teams, Ring Central, Blue Jeans, VoIP, talking things like that when we talk about real-time communications. Now when we're talking about real-time applications and fixed wireless access, two statements here. What we have is speed variability. So out of the box, we have speed variability. We have things like the amount of people connected to a tower, like during rush hour, backhauls. Those things affect speed. And speed is something that we need with real-time communications. Foliage on trees, summer versus winter, that affects RF. Wet versus dry foliage, line of sight and surrounding obstructions. Even if you have line of sight and you think you have the best RF conditions, somebody could build a building across the street. Distance from a tower. You can't move your business usually and you can't tell Verizon to build a tower next to your business. These are things that we have to contend with. Hence the little asterisks on SLAs and the speeds that we see in FWA. So that causes a little heartache with real-time communications. But all is not lost because we can do some things to mitigate this. So what we want in real-time communications is stability. We need symmetrical data speeds, right? We know that uh, FWA wireless is not symmetrical in its nature. And, you know, basically not everyone has a tower where they can scream back to our towers, right? We have big towers and can scream uh, out to everybody or in a particular sector and send a lot of data because we have a lot of wattage. Um, everybody that has fixed wireless access can't erect a tower and put a antenna 200 feet in the air and then transmit at the same wattage that our towers are doing. That's just not, you can't do that. We want consistent speeds. We want low latency delay and jitter. We've known that for decades. So what can we do? How do we get more of what we want, stability, and mitigate what we don't want, variability? Now here's a slide I've shown before. And all it is is me having a category 18 router on my dash, has an LTEBI plan on it, 50 megs, 25 up, and seeing what kind of speeds I get. Now, perfect RF conditions, right on my dash the only thing that has a window you know you can say that's some obstruction but not much and here's the tower over here and here's my house and all i'm doing is driving down the road okay now i'm stopping and rebooting the router at each one of these tests to make sure everything settles in i get connected to the uh, proper bands and things like that but look at this 26 down 10 up okay that's okay but just a few hundred feet down the road, 12 down, 17 up. And you can see for the rest there that there is variability here. Also, how about just in one place? I'm right next to the tower over here and I get 41 and 25. Well, that's great. That's pretty good. But a few tests, I got 8 and 22 and 9 and 24. So these are things that we need to mitigate somehow. We need to peel back the onion and figure out how do we mitigate these things if we're going to run real-time communications and be able to do QoS and things like that. Now, wireless factors that impact speed and thus impact UC and CX, and they impact stability, right? Speed is part of stability. Now, I'm going to tech out a little bit here and nerd out a little bit, but I'm going to bring it back to an analogy that I think may drive it home. The wireless features that control speed and stability of wireless connections are just a few that we need to understand just a little bit about. First, there's this quadrature amplitude modulation. That's the way that we put data bits on a carrier wave, on the frequency that we're using. And we can kind of equate that to a car. So I have a car depicted here. And the type of QAM, or what we call the order of QAM, is how many people we can put in the car. You can see we have three people in there. So let's say we're doing three QAM here, um, uh, for simplicity's sake. So qualm is basically the people we can have in the car. And there's good qualm and there's bad qualm, you know, uh, or there's good, better, best, really. And so there's order of qualm. So we can put one person in the car, we can put two people in the car, we can put five people or six people in the car, all right? And we're gonna transfer, that car is gonna drive down the road, 
to, you know, from the tower to the UE, let's say, user equipment, FWA router, phone, whatever. We can kind of think of QAM that way, and hopefully this drives it home. Now we can put, again, like I said, minimal people or maximum people. So let's continue on. There's also MIMO. Okay, MIMO is multiple input, multiple output, and it provides the ability to use multiple antennas. Most higher category routers, FWA routers, are going to have at least 4x4 four four MIMO. All right, so what does MIMO kind of look like, I guess, in our analogy here? Well, MIMO is kind of the lanes. Okay, so we have a freeway here, right? And then we have multiple lanes, so we can call MIMO each lane. So let's think of it that way. What's really cool about MIMO is we can put a different car on each one of these lanes, or we can copy the car, or copy and paste the car and put it in each lane. Why would we want to do that? Now, we would want to do that if our road was very bad. In other words, our RF signal was bad. We'd make copies of this same car with the people in it, let's say four of them, and we send them down each one of these lanes. And what we're hoping for in this scenario is that one of these cars makes it to the end, or maybe two half cars make it to the end, and the radio at the other side, the receiver, can put the two halves of the cars together, and however many people that were in uh, uh, in each car and put them together and get at least one car with whatever you know the four or six or eight people that it had in there so that's why we would do that if we had bad RF conditions but just think of MIMO as multiple lanes now um, obviously if we put the different cars on each lane and each one of the persons in the car or people in the car or let's say data bits, if we put different cars in each lane, we're going to carry more data bits over that freeway. If we just copy and paste a car, the same car, in each one of our four lanes that we have here, we're going to get four of the same cars at the end of the freeway here. And that's not as good as putting four different cars with, with let's say, 16 different people, four people in each car. Okay, so think of MIMO as the lanes, and um, let's continue on. Now there's this thing called carrier aggregation down here. What is carrier aggregation? What well, carrier aggregation is when we take multiple slices of frequencies that we lease out from the government, from the SEC, and we kind of bring up more freeways. So I'm calling this carrier aggregation. So we bring up carrier aggregation on an as-needed basis. So if we're downloading files or downloading a movie or uploading a movie or whatever, carrier aggregation will come up and then we can have depending on the release of 3gpp and the technology we're using we can have multiple carrier aggregation freeways okay so we have this freeway and this freeway can do mimo in it we have this freeway and that's carrier aggregation and then we can bring up other freeways if we want to also, we can do MIMO in this freeway as well here. So think of carrier aggregation as bringing up more freeways. All right. So now we have multiple freeways, just to go over this again. And then we have multiple lanes in each freeway. And then we have multiple cars that we can put on each freeway. Um, or we can put the same car, copy and paste the same car as well. As far as QAM, we can put one person in the car or four people in the car. All right, so hopefully we got that analogy in our head. So now that we have QAM, MIMO, carrier aggregation, and we've kind of equated it and backed it into freeways, cars, people, and lanes, how do we increase the stability to improve UC and CX? There's a couple of nerdy terms that we got to deal with, and I'll go over them here and also simplify them as best I can. And that's not too hard for me because I understand them very simply as well. So uh, the quality of RF can have a negative or positive impact on QAM, MIMO, and carrier aggregation. Or more simply said, the quality of RF can have a positive or negative impact 
on how many people we can put in the car, how many lanes we can use, and how many freeways we can bring up. The quality is referenced in two items. The reference signal receive power, and we'll just simply think of that as power, the transmit power, the receive power. And this is measured in dBm. All right, and just so you know, I put here good or excellent is minus 60 dBm. Bad is about negative 150-ish dBm. So negative 60, excellent, negative 115 or lower is poor. And then we also have this reference signal receive quality, this RSRQ. And this is basically the quality of the band. Okay, so we have the power of the band and the quality of the band. And I want to equate band the frequency or the freeway that we're using okay so think of every freeway we bring up and we're carry your aggregation or the main freeway that we're using that's the band and each freeway has a certain quality to it maybe one has potholes you know and obstructions and a wreck or whatever uh, and and some don't so the quality of a freeway will definitely measure how many cars how many lanes you can use and things like that so the quality is measured in dB and the highest is like 0 dB when we got 0 dB and then the lowest is negative 20 dB. Okay and then we have this other thing called signal to interference plus noise ratio SINAR or SNR in 3G and then 5G even calls it something different but it is just the noise that we have on that particular band. There's not a lot of specifics on how SINAR is supposed to be measured. So I'll talk about this, but really what indicates the quality is really these two, okay? The RSRP and RSRQ, and those get kind of um, measured and put into a, a number that's given to the tower. So in other words, your phone is measuring RSRP and RSRQ on each band that it sees or it's using and it's telling the tower hey I have uh, this much CQI which is a CQI in there uh, and just think of CQI as the quality the quality of the freeway all right and if you think about that it makes sense especially if we're mobile right we do handoffs and things like that when you see one freeway to one tower you're gonna always report your phone's always gonna be reporting you know hey are there speed bumps or there uh, multiple lanes I can use or what's the quality of this freeway and, and then when it starts getting into another tower sector, right, it's going to see this other guy over here and it's going to start reporting the uh, quality of that freeway. And obviously when you start moving from one tower closer to another one, one freeway is be, going to be have a lot of potholes, let's say, right? And the other freeway is going to look much better uh, because the RF conditions and things like that are getting better because you're getting closer to the other one. That's how kind of handoffs work. So this CQI thing is kind of how handoffs work. And also just think of CQI as kind of a, a overall measurement of the quality of a band, or in our case with our analogy, freeway. I told you that there's multiple lanes, there's multiple people we can put in cars, and there's multiple freeways we can get up. So we need better CQI to get the best QAM, most people in the car, MIMO, most lanes up to the tower and carrier aggregation more freeways going to the tower all right so hopefully you got that one more thing on this slide is that the sign r or the signal to noise ratio here kind of gets input into the rsrq and then the rsrq and rsrp are together and then get input to the cqi in other words sine r is part of rsrq and rsrq and rsrp both are derivatives of the channel quality indicator and then the channel quality indicator the cqi we have a little router here it's always giving this information cqi to the tower Okay, I have two antennas up here. It's always, in fact, in every frame in most cases. So it's continually giving CQI, the quality indicators for each band, to the tower. So the tower always knows what the quality is on each band. 
Okay, we need to understand a little bit about noise. And remember, noise, signal noise gets wrapped up into RSRQ, and that eventually gets wrapped up to CQI. And we want to know how we can get better CQI, ultimately. So here's what we always see in presentations, like mine. We always see these nice signals. Now, it doesn't matter what frequency we're using or anything like that, but we see these nice little sine waves. And then what we don't ever see is we don't see if we look at a real spectrum analyzer and look at the signal itself and parse out the noise. This is what noise looks like. And you can see there's kind of a height there to the noise. Well, when we have a carrier signal and we have noise, I wish we had some eyes that could see this electromagnetic waves going through the air. Um, but if we could see that, this is what it would look like down here. So it would look more like this. So that's kind of a slightly uglier picture there. Right, so what we have is this signal plus the noise, and that kind of equals this. Okay, so when we talk about signal to noise ratio that gets wrapped up into RSRQ and it gets wrapped up to CQI, there's this ratio that we need to discover how it works and what's being reported. And very simply, if we would take the height of this, the height and the trough or the valley, and do a ratio, let's see, here's my little squiggly lines, that's my noise, and I say, well, how much noise do I have relative to my high and low? How, how big is the squiggly lines on the noise? And then we can simply do a little arithmetic problem and say we have, I don't know, let's say here to here is 10, and I'm just picking a number, 10, and then this looks like about um, two, right? We can probably have two, four, six, eight, ten, or something like that. So we'd say ten over two. All right, so our signal to noise ratio is ten over two. All right, so let's continue on. The key is if you increase the signal strength, then the signal to noise ratio is better. What do I mean by that? If we take that same little uh, example here, if I could increase my peak and valley here, but have the same amount of noise. And that's what happens, by the way, when we increase gain in a signal. All right, we increase gain by either turning up the power at the tower or, or antennas or going to the right place in the window or going to the right place on our property. Um, and, and we can see the bars go up or whatever. Um, but if we can increase the strength of the signal, the noise is gonna stay the same. You would think the noise would climb too, but the noise doesn't. The noise is constant. So. In other words, what I'm saying, if we can increase this and keep the same amount of little noise, obviously the noise to signal ratio is gonna change. So maybe we'd have like 10 over one or something like that, okay? So increasing the signal strength gain will change our signal to noise ratio. And that's a good thing because that's how we increase our CQI. So talking about antennas is a whole topic in itself, but I want to convey that the main thing antennas do is increase gain. So one of the first things that you'll see on an antenna when they're talking about the specs of the antenna, they'll talk about the frequencies it covers and the gain at those particular frequencies. Let's look at a couple here real quick. This is an Omni antenna, and this is just the elevation. This is the top view we're looking down on the antenna, so the little antenna is right here. And then we're looking on the side of the antenna, so this is the omnidirectional, so it'll be kind of an antenna like this, right? And we're, you'll see this in, in data sheets for antennas. And you'll see that they're taking a look at the gain on the antenna and the isotropic radiation. But look here, there's different types of antennas that this is identifying. Here's a 6 dBi antenna. Here's a 9 dBi antenna. You can see this one radiates further out. In other words, it reaches further, okay? And it can receive from further towers, basically, in a nutshell. And then you'll see these, again, isotropic radiation patterns. So they're just showing you at particular bands. So they'll break out each band. And this is, we're looking at a side view. And you'll see it's kind of like a donut, you know? And then if we push down on that donut, we get more gain. Yeah, this is six again, and, and we're kind of squishing the donut. You see how they're squishing the donut, pushing down, pushing down. And here we push down more and push down more. You see there? 
and that balloon or that donut <laughs> um, stretches out, stretches out further. And remember, we're looking at a side view of an ant antenna here. So the little antenna is right there. The little antenna is right here. And this antenna is here. Okay, so we're going further out, basically, is how they architect these antennas. And the higher the gain, the further out it's going to go. But we lose height, right? So this is height right here. Uh, so we're flattening it out. So we might flatten it out and there be an antenna uh, so far away from us, but it's above. You know, maybe the antenna's over here and it's way, way up here or something like that, right? Our tower. And then we're not going to catch it, right? Because we're, we're squeezing uh, the balloon and it's going kind of under the antenna. So anyway, I just want to show you that. And then we have directional antennas, which this is where we really get gain because what we're doing here, again, we have the balloon and we're looking at the side view here. Here's the antenna. These are usually panel antennas. They're a little different architecture than just a pole. And we're squeezing the balloon, but we're squeezing it one way. It's only going one way. So we're saving, we're getting all the air, let's say, out of the balloon, or other analogy, and pushing all the air one way. And then we can push it some more, flatten it out and push it one way, and flatten it out even more and push it one way. Okay, now again, it's important, if you don't know, here's our here's our little antenna and it's pointed this way same thing here same thing here it's pointed this way I drew it over here inside it's really in the middle but anyway and then you can see if we look uh, on top of the antenna excuse me on the side of the antenna right here um, it's kind of the same right so again you narrow you really got to point these the right way you see these omnidirectional they'll catch everything over here but they don't have as much gain but if you have a, a directional antenna, you can point it in the right direction. Maybe our tower is out here or something. You point it, and you're going to get more gain. And remember, one more gain changes the signal-to-noise ratio, which changes the CQI, which changes how many people we can put in the car, how many cars we can put on the lane, and how many freeways we can uh, stand up to the FWA router. So let me summarize and wrap this up in a big red bow for you. More gain with the proper antennas for the particular use case, which probably will take a site survey, will produce better SINAR, which is really more signal with less noise, which is really better RSRQ, which is really better CQI reported from the UE to the tower. And this all equals higher order qualm or more bits in each carrier or simply more people in each car and that equals more bits also equals better MIMO each lane will carry a different car versus copying cars for quality that equals more bits and then more carrier aggregation which simply is more freeways for the cars to travel on and that equals more bits so we have more bits, more bits, and more bits. And that equals more megabits. <laughs> all right. Uh, this all equals mitigating our wireless variability and increasing our wireless stability. And ultimately, we are after a better experience with real-time communications. Teams, VoIP, Ring Central. So thanks for watching, and hopefully this has been educational for you.